Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and today I'm very excited to welcome bespoke tailor Eric Jensen back in my office uh, for a first fitting of a new garment he's making for me. Of course, he made this beautiful suit that I'm wearing today. Uh, you may have seen that entire process. We filmed it, and it's available on this channel. But Eric is a great friend and a talented tailor, and it's exciting to have him start working on a second suit for me. Eric, hey. Thank you so much for coming into the office, oh, and uh, you know it's got to be great traveling again, right? Yes, it feels you know a little more freedom to uh, you know be able to move about the, co the country, see clients that I usually can't see or haven't been able to see. So yeah, we're real excited to be able to travel. And so you're in the first, uh, in the middle of what is your first kind of tour, uh, yeah. really of 2021, and probably even 2020. Yes, it's uh, it's been the first tour actually for a long time. Yeah. Uh, now being under the name Sartria Gallo, yeah. we've had the freedom to be able to start traveling, mm -hmm. uh, reading, reaching customers that we wouldn't be able to reach. Um, yeah. So it's been it's been liberating. It's yeah, been nice. well that's exciting. Yeah. Well congratulations on Sartoria Gallo. I, this is your I, uh, this is fitting. the piece right here, the first one, so that's exciting. So we'll uh, hang this up for later. But um, so uh, talk a little bit about Sartoria, Sartoria Gallo. I know that of course you know, that's where you trained. Yeah, yeah. And then here you are uh, actually kind of officially, uh, you know, collaborating with them. Yeah. It's got to be full circle and quite exciting. It is. It's very exciting. It's also exciting to be able to bring the Gallo name to the United States. Um, they're huge in Rome and really big and well-known tailoring house in Italy, uh, but the Americans don't know too much about them. So to be able to be that ambassador, partner with my master tailor and, and bring their name to the States has just yeah. been uh, an honor, quite frankly. So Well, and the fact that Satoria Gallo is, uh, you know, one of the largest, uh, you know, bespoke tailoring kind of schools in Italy, yes. you know, really speaks to just how well established the firm is. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the history that we have, you know, with, um, you know, working with the uh, Prince of Due Sicilia, we have the work that we've done with uh, the popes, Pope Francis and Pope uh, John Paul. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of incredible. And to, to be able to attach my name, uh, you know, onto such history is, 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 yeah. uh, is amazing. Well, and to get some help too, right? Yeah. Because that's part <laughs> yes. of the challenge of growing a business is, I mean, you were literally doing everything 100% yourself. Yes, exactly. And, and this, you know, you, the backlog and the wait time the clients had to go through was just, you know, it was getting to the point where it's just it's yeah. too much and and it's not it's not fair to them and it wasn't fair to me. Yeah, so that's right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so to be able to have their help, you know, it's still the same system, still the same method of work, the same amount of uh, hours go into each coat, but now it's just done by our master tailors in Rome yeah. who, you know, who are the hands that taught me. So yeah. it's it's, it's Well, it's that's incredible. exciting. It's exciting to kind of see this trend of um, you know these really famous uh, heritage bespoke tailoring houses actually opening up full-time New York cutting rooms with uh, properly kind of trained uh, bespoke cutters, yeah. you know, and bespoke tailors like yourself, you know, really kind of bridging the um, you know the distance or the gap between you know America. Uh, in these historic houses. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, this way there's a permanent location with a permanent, you know, master tailor on site and, you know, um, that, that will always be there bringing the goods that, you know, were once having to come through trunk shows or traveling yeah. tailors from Europe and mm -hmm. you'd see them once, twice a year and, and that's it. So, yeah. um, you know, you get that level of quality with also the face-to-face, -face, you know, clienteling and, and uh, experience, you know, yeah. that you, you almost expect when you go to a tailor. Yeah. House, well, so. it really kind of extends that level of service. That, exactly. You know, really the Italians probably, you know, were able to enjoy and appreciate. But, you know, as a traveling American, I mean, yeah. like you said, you're either in Europe twice a year, yeah. if you're lucky, or you catch them whenever they travel here. Yeah, and your, your schedules have to line up. And, they have to line up. And, you know, the bespoke tailoring process is all about that relationship, and it's all about the high touch. Yeah. Right? And so if you're not able to see your tailor frequently, I mean, some of these garments can stretch on, you know, for oh, two yeah. years for to make something. Years. Yeah, it's totally true. And, you know, even during this time, I've noticed that with my clients, even though we're so close, like we're still in the United States, but even during this time, it's like, you know, I haven't been able to see them for a year, you know, the ones that I had to travel to. And I can't imagine them having to deal with that, you know, in Italy, in Italy or with a European yeah. you know, tailor that crossed the pond. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm loving my bespoke fresco, yeah, fresco suit that you made. Yes. Uh, this is that, you know, heavy 13-ounce dark gray fresco fabric. Yeah. I mean, perfect for summer. Yeah, yeah. It has a trousers. great uh, breathability to it. Like, you wouldn't know it by touching it because it's such a heavy cloth, but it's an open weave. It gives a nice pass through of the air, and yeah, it's actually a cooling cloth. And yesterday, you were actually wearing a very beautiful oh, yes. brown fresco, weren't you? <laughs> no, actually, that was a brown uh, tobacco linen. Tobacco, oh, yeah. that's right. Okay. So it was uh, Irish linen, which is, um, I talk, when I talk to my clients about linen, 
you know, I always want to see how they feel and how they react to linen because linen can be off-putting to most clients just yeah. because of, um, you know, the wrinkling effect and stuff. So for me, I find it off-putting if the wrinkles don't have a purpose. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so an Irish linen gives you the ability to have a more structure and strength in your linen. And I feel like the uh, creases that an Irish linen gives off um, are more purposeful, if yeah. that makes any sense. You know, yeah. like a lot of people look at me weird when I say that. But, you know, there's a necessity, there's a, necess there's, a well, there's more of a roll to the crease versus yeah, exactly. kind of a hard, a sloppy hard, crease. Yeah, exactly. Or it's just kind of where you don't want it. You know, like I'm fine with getting a crease back behind my legs or in the armpits, something like yeah. that. But I don't want to, uh, I don't want, you know, I don't yeah, want random creasing yeah, across random crease, the, uh, the yeah, chest. where it doesn't belong. So I feel like an Irish linen gives you that relaxed uh, feel with a little bit more structure. So, yeah, it was, it's a great suit. So we talked a little bit about kind of the piece you've got for me today. Yeah. This is kind of what you saw as kind of the next evolution, which is something I really enjoy because, you know, again, I go back to one of the greatest values of working with the bespoke tailor is uh, the knowledge that they bring of, of cloth. Yes. Uh, and really, you know, kind of the, now the perspective they have in everyone's sartorial evolution. Yes. Because right? you've seen clients, yeah. you know, buying their first suit, and you've seen clients that are probably under their hundredth. Right, you kind of see that arc. Yeah, you've probably lived through the mistakes. <laughs> done, I've done them myself, <laughs> you know, on myself, and yeah. yeah, I've seen clients go through them as well. And you know, you're right. As a tailor, you that's your job is to guide them and minimize the mistakes as much as possible. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, with this piece, you know, we we gave you something with a pattern, gives you a stripe to it, kept it in the gray family, which I yeah. think is great for you. You feel comfortable in it. You know, it's somewhere that you're going to feel happy to pull out of your closet. It's not going to stretch you too far. Yeah. Um, but there's a there's a tint to it that I yeah. find just really elegant. And you, yeah. whenever I talk to clients about, you know, pieces of cloth mm -hmm. and they're choosing something, you always want to make sure that, like, you pick something that not everyone is going to be able to find off the rack. You yeah. know what I mean? So that when you're walking down the street and someone walks past you, they go, you know, a little, yeah. a little turn back just mm -hmm. to go, oh, that's a very interesting cloth. That's a very interesting cut. That's very, you know, something to catch the eye because it's bespoke. And you yeah. want to you want to show that off without being ostentatious. Yeah, absolutely. Being, yeah. So I think we picked a, a fun yeah. cloth for that. For yeah, and for view. full disclosure, you know, one of the things I asked Eric to do was to actually, I gave you no input. And <laughs> yeah. I said, you guys come up with something. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and so um, you know, this will be the first time I've seen it in person. Yeah. But I thought it would be fun to kind of throw that uh, yeah. Back on you and kind of see really <laughs> see how much we you well yeah, to yeah. see what you know kind of your perspective on where you thought the gaps might have been in my wardrobe yeah and kind of where you'd like to see me go yeah, so definitely and yeah that was one of the things that we took into account especially and we worked with Dormier uh, the cloth rep from Dormier and so you know being able to find that cloth was really fun yeah. to work between the two of us yeah. so. and another great kind of asset of, a, of a, a true bespoke tailor is the relationship he has with this cloth merchant exactly yeah and yeah. then you get so much more insight that yeah. way so. well, let's take a look so yeah. I'll hand this over to you. And um, Let me, we can see what we have. For you. So we're in the shell basted fitting uh, stage, uh, basically what we call a first fitting, which you've been through, um, but for the people out there. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see, it's a gray. It reads a little on the green side. So we've talked about this before. There's blue grays, you know, and, and green grays. And, and I think that this is just going to really um, push towards that green uh, gray side and give you something that's a little different in your wardrobe, mm -hmm. but still comfortable for your wardrobe. Yeah. Um, lightweight, great for Texas for your, you know, four seasons. Four season fabric. Uh, yeah, you gotta, it's about nine, nine and a half ounce cloth. Mm -hmm. A uh, little on the open weave. So what stage of the fitting are we at right here? So yeah, this is your typical first fitting um, in a bespoke process. What you're looking at basically is cloth and canvas, and that's about it. Um, it's put together with these basting threads, which are the white thread that you see here. Um, that's basically holding the floating canvas to the cloth uh, in a manner that they both meld together seamlessly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we do that because nothing's glued. So the cloth and the canvas are going to be free-floating yeah. the entire time, even as your coat sits now. Mm -hmm. um, then after that, um, you can see also, if you hang that up for me, <coughs> that you have the collar basted on. You have the small stitches on the collar, which create the roll of the collar to get it to come to the neck and roll down clean onto the body, mm -hmm. um, which is then attached to the lapel in a manner that creates even the lapel roll without the stitching on the lapel yet. Yeah. We don't put that on yet just because if I have to elongate or shorten the lapel or you know make it wider, make it thinner, um, if I've already done all that work with the hand, then I'm I'm breaking up my hand work yeah. and it's it's you know it's yeah. too much work. Um, on the inside you have the canvas, which is the horsehair canvas mm -hmm. here, 
uh, along and with so the you're body building kits. this up by scratch. It's not a pre-bought canvas. No, no, no. Yes, yes. Everything's done by scratch. Um, all the cuts in the canvas, uh, the horsehair canvas, and then the body canvas are yeah. all done once we know your measurements. So we build each canvas specifically mm -hmm. to you and place the cuts yeah. specifically to you. And you're darting it and kind of doing all the shaping. Exactly, because we're creating. Yeah, at this stage, we're shaping the canvas to um, almost the majority of how it's going to be when it's finished. Yeah. We had a couple more pieces to make sure that we had structure where we needed, mm -hmm. um, but. But again, we put in as little as possible. So this is the majority of what's going into your game. Yeah. And Satoria Gallo, I mean, being Roman, we yes. have a slightly lighter weight canvassing than, say, a traditional London Savile Row tailor. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and it all depends on the cloth as well. So for the most part, we use a very lightweight uh, canvas because mm -hmm. most of the cloths we're going to work with are pretty lightweight because mm -hmm. we want to give that client a very, very soft feeling. Yeah. If we go higher in weight or density of the cloth, we sometimes bring up the canvas weight just to kind of marry the two mm -hmm. together. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's all that together. And this way, um, as the coat is, uh, like this, I have the ability to rip things, take things apart while it's on your body to ensure that we can, you know, make sure the fit is as close to you as, as yeah. possible. So you can't go like straight to like a Ford fitting where basically everything's almost done but the buttonholes. Yes, exactly. Because yes. at, that, at that rate, you're, you're putting a lot into guessing. You know, like, as I measured you the first time um, and looked at your body and, and noticed things about it, I go then to the, to the pattern and I make your pattern and I adjust it in a way in which I see that you are as mm -hmm. best as I can with my eyeball. Mm -hmm. But when you put the coat on, the coat tells you things that you won't be able to see because yeah. you're reading the coat. It's like it's a book, yeah. you know. And without the coat, without being able to read the coat, you're almost, you're guessing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the fabric too, right? Because yeah, I mean, you're fabrics. basically sculpting, you know, a one-dimensional, you know, fabric into three-dimensional. Into three-dimensional, exactly. And so Four how it lays and how shape. it interacts exactly. is really important. Yep. And each cloth is going to behave differently, yeah. you know. And so even like these long seams on the sleeve, I mean, that's just all It's all, kind of yeah, in all hand-basted in. Everything's hand-basted in. So at any point in this, uh, the, in the part that it's at right now, I can take it apart, you know, and, and put redo it back together. Everything. Yeah, and redo yeah. everything. And that just helps for us to be able to make sure we get a, yeah. as best fit as possible mm -hmm. for you. And then talk a little bit about the trousers. So, you know, we've got trousers right here, you know, also unfinished. Yes. And so, you know, you've also got, you know, a lot of basting. You've got these really, you know, kind of funny oh, little threads thread here on the front, yes. you know, marking the crease. Yep. Talk to me about what this is doing for you. Yeah, so um, these thread marks here in the front are actually the way in which tailors um, mirror the pattern from the top layer of cloth to the bottom layer of cloth. Mm -hmm. So everything on a suit is a mirrored image of itself. Yeah. You know, your left side has to be the same as your right side. So when we place the pattern onto the cloth um, and we chalk it out, the chalk marks are only on the top part of the cloth, mm -hmm. not on the bottom side. So in order to make sure that we mirror the pattern exactly, we pass thread through it and then we clip it and then we pull the, the pieces uh, apart okay. and you have these thread marks that actually show the actual pattern. So we mark where we want our uh, crease line to be, we mark where we want our hip uh, balance to be, where we want our knee balance to be, and where we want our hem to be. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, the trousers are all just basted again together yeah. with um, what we have is just um, band roll, which mm -hmm. is the interior canvas of a um, waistband. waistband. Um, and that just gets the trouser in a way in which it looks like a trouser, but everything has the ability to fall, mm -hmm. to be broken down and, and broken apart. Yeah. So, Great. Yeah. Well, so that's, that's the stage we're in, and then we go from here, we'd have you do the try on, and, and we'll, we'll see how it looks up. Yeah, great. So here we are. Yeah, so we have the trousers on now. Um, basically what we're looking for um, are a few folds. So first thing that I always check on is to make sure that the client feels comfortable in the waist. Um, you know, with it also bearing in mind the fact that right now there's nothing inside of these trousers. Mm -hmm. So there will be added a little bit of, uh, you know, inner linings and things like that that are going to add some girth to the trousers, you know girth that's going on mm -hmm. on the waistband. So if it feels good right now, uh, I usually want to add just a little bit of room um, for that to account for that. The other thing is, is that I think we've spoken and, and you've said that you like to wear braces, braces with yeah. it. So with a brace trouser, you can add a little bit of room to mm -hmm. the trouser because they're hanging off your shoulder, they're mm -hmm. not hanging off your um, yeah. waist. Um, and that allows the client to feel more comfortable. It also allows the client to 
eat, eat dinner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and not or or, and or age. lose. Yes, age <laughs> and eat or lose at the same time and not feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, next, I go down the list. I just go down to the hips. Yeah. Make sure that your pleats are lying clean. Mm-hmm. What I always do on a fitting is I tack the pleats down longer than I normally would. And the reason why is because if that stays tacked down there and they still stay closed, that means we've got enough ample room in there. Okay. Um, you can and also that's room across kind of like the yeah, front. Yeah, right across the front, and that's just keeping this as a nice drape, nice clean line mm-hmm. straight down in. Um, the next thing I do is I want to make sure um, one that we get your hem a little higher just because I want to see how the trousers drape from the side. So right now, if you turned and faced that wall, Mm -hmm. for the people at home, and stood, I want this clean line like this. So I can see that it comes in a little bit for the back of your uh, thigh into the back of your knee, Mm -hmm. and then comes out a little bit for your calf. If anywhere there's a break or, or some way in which that cloth loses that clean line, then I know that we have a problem out with our balance. I also want to make sure these are nice and clean and flat and straight, and we have those as well. Yeah. And this is before any pressing or anything. So. Yeah, so we haven't even added shape to the, to the cloth. Yeah. The only thing I can see is it feels like it's a little, looks like it's a little tight in your fork. Does okay. it feel a little tight in that area? I don't want to name the area. Yeah, uh, it doesn't feel tight, but maybe it's a little higher than it should be. Are you pull, you pulled up a little? Yeah, too I pulled high? it up a little bit. Okay. Right, because I mean, if it's higher waisted trousers, I mean, where would you, where would you want the trousers to sit? Right maybe. around navel to right under the navel. Yeah. So yeah. this is, the navel's right here. Okay. So. So I, I, I personally, I would have them go yeah, a little just bit lower. Touch. Just okay. Like that. And that helps clean up your underside. Can you hold those again? Yeah. Yep. Perfect. And then, yeah, so that's, I, I still think I want to let that out yeah. just to give you a little more um, of a pleasant view back yeah. there. Uh, and also it'll make you feel a little more comfortable. Yeah. Well, the more room, the better, I mean. Yeah. I think it's one of the early mistakes people make is they're like, yeah, bring it in tight. Yeah. You know, but really, you know, if you were to err on any side, you know, loose always looks better than tight. It does. And, and it allows it, for drape. It, well, it allows for drape. And, I mean, we all are probably going to gain a little bit of weight as we age. Yes. So it allows for additional longevity before you having to let things out. Exactly. And, and that just prolongs the longevity of the trousers. Of the overall garment. Yeah, of the yeah. overall garment. So I'm going to put a mark back here. So I'm, I'm going to just do this. And that just helps me to let that out and just know that I just want to clean that up a little. Other than that, I think they look fantastic. Yep. And they have a really great drape yep. and really great body. And so we'll do single single pleats. Single pleats. Mm. Um, I know that you like a zip for your yeah. trouser front. Usually we do buttons, but, you know, for the client that's really picky and wants a zip, yeah. happy to do it. Um, what about the waistband style? So, you know, my other one kind of closes right here. Yes. And then this one, is it going to be the traditional Italian style that goes all the way across? Yeah, usually that's how we're going to we do it. We give mm-hmm. you a little bit of a longer. Um, mm-hmm. That's just, yeah. I, I would say house style, but it's just house preference, if you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if the client, you know, at the Let's end of the day, with it. yeah, okay, we'll try it. At the end of the day, it's your pairs, uh, your trousers. Yeah. So as much as I want to throw my spin onto it, mm-hmm. you're the one who has to wear them. Yeah. So I always go at each fitting with that in mind, with and also make sure that the client has that in mind. Mm-hmm. Because if I say we're doing a long waistband, and you're like, I don't want a long waistband. Yeah. You know, why am I pushing my you know, yeah. belief on you when you have to wear it all the time. But yeah. this is how I would normally cut them. Okay. You like watch pocket? Uh, no. No watch pocket? Yeah. And then on your front trousers uh, for the pockets on mm-hmm. the front, do, uh, we talked about this. You like the um, the single welt, correct? Single welt. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then on your back pockets, I can't remember those. Uh, so the back pockets, <clears throat> um, probably two. Two? Yeah. Do, you bu- do you like to button them? Um, you know, normally the back right one I'll leave a good question. We'll have to check. Okay. I think buttons on both. Okay. Yeah. Right. Because if I put anything on it, you yeah. Know. If you put anything in it, you want to have that sit back up. Yeah. And not fall and gape mm-hmm. open. Um, so, how do you think we should do the back pockets? Um, you know, do you see yourself using both of them? Do you use one? You know, how yeah. often do you use a back pocket? Yeah. If, if I ever use a back pocket, it's going to be the right back pocket. Okay. And you know, if I'm standing, I may throw my wallet in there or my phone. Just course, some, somewhere to have something. Somewhere to, to have to. something. Of course, I always take that out if I'm sitting. Yeah. Uh, and the only time I would ever button it is if I didn't have anything in it. Okay. So we'll put a button on there. With yeah. A, yeah. That, that looks great. I mean, whatever's going to be the cleanest. Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, my my kind of mantra is if you don't need it, why have it there? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I have this conversation a lot with clients because when you're buying off the rack, you get what you get. Yeah. And a lot of times also with made to measure, you get whatever they give you. Mm-hmm. Um, as this being bespoke, this is 100% yours. And so you have to feel 
comfortable in what you have, but then not have things on there that you don't need. Yeah. So I don't use back pockets at all, so I don't put them in. Mm -hmm. But I know that you and other clients, you know, want that just one extra space that maybe I want to throw this in, you yeah. know, just to have have a pocket there. Yeah. So you're making me think about not having any pockets. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's something you will have to decide yeah. before we we finish yeah. it off. But you have time to think about yeah. it. So later on, if you've thought about it and you're like, you know what, Eric, I, I don't need yeah. those back pockets. I probably would do one back pocket. I mean, I. I strictly prefer not to put things in my front pocket because yes. at that point you really disrupt the drape. Yeah, and, and you trouser. and you ruin the front so the pleats yeah. and everything. Yes. One a back pocket on the right. Perfect. Uh, and then nothing on yeah. the left. And then um, and then I think on these trousers I think it would look really elegant with a turn up. Turn up. Yeah. yeah. And a two inch one to give it a good you know good body weight. to yeah. it, weight to it. Yeah, I like turn ups on how they you know really kind of help pull the trouser down to create that drape and that sharp kind of crisp, crease. Uh, yeah, crease. I agree. Uh, and they also kind of help to keep the pleats closed. Yeah, they just add a little bit more of extra weight down yeah. there. Um, yeah. And then we always put a kick tape on the back of the okay. trouser as well to make for sure added that, weight. yeah, for added weight and also to keep them from, you know, ever catching or dragging mm -hmm. or snaring that yeah. cuff. Okay, cool. Great. So yeah, I think these look good. Let's throw the coat on. Beautiful. Yes. So one of the things I was admiring kind of on the hanger was the beautiful kind of belly uh, of the collar. Yeah. Which is kind of this bellow that you have. Yeah, just give it a little bit of a curve out, and that yeah. gives a little more shape and elegance yeah. to the And tail. this jacket right here, I think, is a beautiful showcase of that, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you can see also with the lines, we make sure that we follow the lapel mm -hmm. uh, edge with the lines as well. Yeah. So what do you think? So, yeah, we've got some work to do. <laughs> yeah, with the base it fitting. Yeah. So first and foremost, I want to make sure that we've got balance correct, <clears throat> which is going to be your front to back balance, um, which allows us to make sure that this falls straight. Um, mm. Your fronts lie parallel. That the front isn't hanging down too low or too yeah, high. Yeah, so if you think about it, uh, your body is a fulcrum, mm -hmm. uh, and we're putting a piece uh, on it. And if we put it too far forward, it falls forward. Mm -hmm. And if we put it too far back, it falls back. But if mm -hmm. we put it first perfectly balanced on you, it sits just right. Mm -hmm. So if it's too far forward, I can see things like your fronts will fall away. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's too far back, there's going to be a push out of the yeah. coat. Um, so I don't want to see. Like that. Yeah, exactly. And you'll see like a kick out over mm -hmm. here. It's, it's unsightly. Same thing with the back. So right now, if I don't look at me, look as, look as normal as you can. If I pin them like this, everything looks lined up and clean. And the other thing I want to see is when I unpin it, it stays. Okay. Okay. So that, that way I know that your front balance is nice. But I've noticed if I pin it where the button stance should be, that you have a fullness here in the chest, which means we have too much length from this side point to here as opposed to this point to here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so as a basic fitting, we can adjust for that. So that'll also help <clears throat> clean up the collar line mm -hmm. as well. <clears throat> so now what I want to see is I want to see it from afar because it helps me to gauge, um, you know, more about the coat. Uh, the more that you can take in of the mm -hmm. coat, the, the better. And so um, if I'm too close, my, my vision's too small, you know, yeah. so I don't get to take. It's like when you go and see a painting, you know, uh, you want to see it up close. You can you can look at each individual piece, but to take it all in, you step back, mm -hmm. and that's how you really are able to enjoy the artist's work. So yeah, so I look at it like this. I like the way it looks. I always check arm arm side, and chest.
Mark sleeve pitch while we can. And so that's the kind of rotation <clears throat> for. Pat. Yeah, it's how you hold your arms mm -hmm. in relationship to your body. Let me ask you this: Is there? Do you feel any pressure here from the coat? Yeah, I feel pressure on this side. On that side, okay. And a little bit like right here. Yeah, you look like you have it more on this yeah. side. Do you feel it on this side? Okay, let me think. I know. Um, I mean, I definitely feel it right here, and then on this side, just a little bit right here also. Okay. It's like the optometrist. A, I know. A or B? Yep. A and you're like, person. wait, was it B? Was it A? Does that release that pressure? A little bit, a little yeah. Bit. And how soft do you make these shoulders? Usually I put no pad in. Okay. Um, for you, I might consider putting a pad um, just to give you <clears throat> literally like that thin. So mm -hmm. a really, really thin pad just to give you a little less slope on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, it's all an aesthetic thing. Yeah. Uh, so I want you to still feel the comfort of having, you know, a Sartria Gallo suit, but I want you to also look the best you possibly can. So I want to find that happy medium with mm -hmm. clients. <clears throat> and you say you feel it yeah. good on this side, right? Yeah. Do you feel it also on that other suit we made? Do you feel pressure there? I'd have to wear it. Mm. A little better, a little mm -hmm. more released. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It looks better in the shape of the chest as well. Okay. So the other, next part is I'm going to take in the back and see what we have. We have a little bit of room here. And so for you, we've done the two side vents um, instead of the traditional center vent, or I guess a more classic center vent. Uh, as an Italian, it's something that, you know, we really kind of err towards, um, the two side vents. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Um, first, I'm going to make a pin, and then I'm going to ask you feeling and, and movement-wise. Can you move uh, your arms forward and back and tell me if there's restriction? A little bit like... A little bit? Right here? Yeah, at the fullness. Mm -hmm. Should I do it again? And that's a lot of, of ability, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I want to reduce that a touch. <clears throat> Not as much as I pinned out, but a little bit. Just to clean up your back a little bit more. And then you have a little bit of pulling here between the blades. You have mm -hmm. more of a pronounced blade. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to release that. I just want to shape it. So okay. I'm going to shape it with the iron just to be able to shrink a little bit of this out okay. and still give you the fullness that you need there. Amazing what you can do with an iron. Yeah, it really is. So thoughts on other styling details? Yeah, I mean, so for the most part as an Italian, we're going to always pick stitch your edge of your mm -hmm. lapel all the way through your body of your cloth and then the um, darts of mm -hmm. the front of the coat. We also pick the side dart, um, sorry, and we also pick our center back 
and our side yeah. um, sides as well. And all that's done by hand just to kind of further control the garment. Yeah, exactly. It just gives it more strength, more body, um, the ability to have a little more longevity mm -hmm. to it. Um, it's just reinforcement. You yeah. know, as, as beautiful as it is, it's not for beauty. It's mm. actually for yeah. a purpose. And what about single or double? Because this one's got a double pick stitch. Yeah, so I usually like to see how the cloth kind of looks and feels mm. and, and dictates it. I feel like this cloth is lends itself to a little more formality, and for that I'd probably only do a one, single. one single row mm -hmm. on the side just to keep that theme, you know what yeah. I mean? Do you do it along the sleeves also? Yeah, we do it on the back, back. Uh, back okay. sleeve. So all of our... All of our um, Seams are turned, okay. so instead of pressing a seam flat open, mm -hmm. we turn them and then we pick them on top. So okay. you give it just an extra layer of strength and mm. stability. Um, let's check your sleeve length. You like to show a yeah, some cuff. Decent amount or little you, amount? You like a quarter. Okay. Go ahead and relax. You're, we're not going to finish your buttons um, because you know, things always change in the mounting process. So I mark your sleeve so that we get close to what we want, but I don't want to put button holes mm -hmm. in it until. And do you do button holes in, um, in New York? Yeah, yeah. So as those are handmade in New York as a part of the finishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And talk a little bit about the darting because that's very different in, you know, kind of a Neapolitan or Roman suit. Definitely. So what are we seeing here? I mean, the darts are already cut in. Yeah, so the darts are already sewn and, and placed. What we have is our front dart that always goes straight down to the hem. Gives mm -hmm. you a little more of a um, <clears throat> controlled skirt with giving a drape as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do our dart that goes in from the um, under the armhole into the pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, and that gives us your ability to do shape. And how many panels? Is it still just two panels? It's still just two panels. Okay. Yeah. So we have our front piece that's all one piece. And then we have our back piece, which mm -hmm. is all one piece. Um, and that's it. Most people, you know, like we talked about before, will do a three piece. Yeah. So you'll do a front, side, and back. Okay. And so you're building that shape in through the darting through process. Through the darting process and through the canvas mm -hmm. and, and through fit and all that stuff. Yeah. And what type of pockets? I mean, simple. Yeah, so I, I would do a barquetta. So a barquetta literally means little ship. And so what, what it is is your chest pocket, but instead of, oops, how the English cut it, which is very straight mm -hmm. and straight. Um, we cut it with a, a little bit of shape. shape up, so it kind of looks like the hull of a boat. Yeah, so it's got a little bit of a crescent yeah, shape into it. Exactly, it's beautiful yeah. detail. Yeah, it just adds a little bit more to the eye mm -hmm. and, and, and picks things yeah. up. Yeah, like so you've got a little Milanese buttonhole here. So yeah, That's exactly. Better. So we do that uh, in all our suits, an Asolucita or an Asola Milanese, mm -hmm. uh, which is just a, enhances the coat. It's a twice as long to make buttonhole, and it's just it's a really elegant, beautiful yeah. buttonhole. Well, great. So what's next then? So you've got this marked up. Yeah, so we'll do this. I'm, I'm happy in the, in the place that we're at. So um, we'll probably move on to a forward fitting after yeah. this. And, um, and so yeah. the forward fitting, are you sending it to Italy? Yes, yes. Okay. So what we'll do is I'll break it down. I'll make the adjustments that are necessary, mm -hmm. uh, get it all ready to go, uh, send it out to Italy, and they'll master tailors there will make it up. Mm -hmm. It'll come back in a basted form still, but your collar will be on, your sleeves will be on, your lapels. Lining will be Lining will be in. Out. It'll be close to done, but mm -hmm. we'll have the ability to make some yeah. adjustments. And are you working on a paper pattern at yeah, this yeah. point? Yeah, yeah. So everything's on a paper pattern. The way that it helps is because... Every time that we do one of these, I adjust your pattern to get closer and closer so mm -hmm. we don't have to do as many as of yeah. these. Um, you know, I still like to have some semblance of control over the fitting process mm -hmm. unless, um, you know, we've worked with each other for a long, long time. Yeah. Then I know what needs to be done and your pattern's pretty close to perfect and then yeah. I'll feel more comfortable sending yeah. it out and having it come back yeah. more finished. Great. And what about buttonholes on the sleeve? So you've got two on this one. Yeah, I do two. I usually do between two and three for my suits um, mm -hmm. just to add something of interest, something that's different. Um, you know, a lot of clients still do want to do four. We, we do four as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it really all depends. Again, it's up to the client and it's up to the cloth. Yeah. So there's a sense of formality still with this cloth. Um, you have a sense of formality in the way that you hold yourself and the mm -hmm. way that you speak. So for you, I'd stick in a three or four range. Yeah. Um, yeah, for your, for your okay. buttonholes. But it, it's something that we don't have to decide now. Mm -hmm. Once we get it done to the finished um, product, <clears throat> you can you know look at it more closely and see yeah. and then go. Yeah. Because they're not cut until yeah. we cut them. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, how much longer until you think that um, you can get this back? Yeah. I thing? mean, we'll send it off to the tailors, see you know what the workload is, and, and get it back. But um, shouldn't be too long. Yeah. Great. Know, definite, yeah. Well, I'm excited about this. So. Yeah, it's uh, a great cloth. Beautiful. It'll be a beautiful coat. Yeah. Well, great choice, Eric. Thanks, Kurt. Thank you so much. Yeah. Nice having you back, and I can't wait to see this uh, yeah. 
this project progress along. Thank you. Very excited.